Y'all ain't ready for this. A misunderstood detail about Amazon often translates to an alarmist headline, but stories about Amazon's contributions to society are decidingly infrequent. Amazon's third party seller program, and I quote, has enabled tens of thousands of entrepreneurs to become millionaires and maybe the greatest wealth creation platform in history, but not much is written about that. Let's go! A few years ago, Nine University started out as two guys building an Amazon business selling cornhole lights and talking about it in front of a camera in a 300 square foot studio apartment. Now it's an organization with 150 plus people on payroll featured in the likes of Forbes, Business Insider, Sourcing Journal, and more. Nine University is a team and we have to share what we know with the world, with you. It's not about what we offer, it's about gaining knowledge and expertise from real people building real businesses that you can apply to yourself. Let's freaking get it. Nine University, that's who we are. So I pose a question. Is Amazon FBA still worth starting in 2020? And I'm gonna take this a different path, okay? Because there are some other videos that are kind of similar to this and people wanna talk about specifically like FBA, third party, like how, how hard it's becoming, how Amazon's changing all these things. It's not what I wanna talk about, okay? What I want to talk about, by the way, hello, what's up? Taylor here, Nine University, blah, blah, blah. I'm so pumped, right? Okay, here's what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about the fact that Amazon is the 1,600,000 million pound gorilla in the room and people need to be paying attention. Some people are, but a lot of people aren't, okay? Let me read you this. By the way, that quote that I read before, that's from prnewswire.com, that's a real quote, okay? I actually read that. But let me let me drop you some other some other headlines, okay? And obviously we'll pop these off, but why 2020 could be the year Amazon becomes unstoppable. What does that even mean? That's ridiculous right here. Let me give you let me give you another headline, right? Amazon will be the most important company of the 2020s. Okay, that if that's not sensationalist journal journalism, I don't know what is, but let's like actually look at some details, right? According to CNBC on that same article, in 2010 Amazon had a revenue of 34.2 billion in 2010. In 2019, Amazon had a revenue of $279.1 billion, okay? That's about $60,000 off of a 10X over 10 years. That's ridiculous. Let's talk about, I'm gonna go back, okay? But here's what we're gonna keep talking about. Obviously, 2020 has been a roller coaster for everyone, okay? No matter where you're at in the world, no matter what you do, it's been a absolute roller coaster. I mean, do you guys even remember that back at the beginning of 2020, right, that the United States could have very well gone to war with Iran, and then a passenger jet was shot. Did you guys even remember that happened in 2020, right? There's obviously been so many things with COVID-19, with the pandemic, but let's talk about this, okay? In January 2020, the Amazon stock price was around $1,898. In July of 2020, now it's up to $2,961, and that's after a little dip, okay? That's ridiculous, still $1,000 in growth in their stock price in the pandemic. Amazon hired 125,000 people during that pandemic plus, and Amazon just came out that said they basically want to keep those 125,000 pandemic workers. They offered to keep them on because the peak of Amazon is just continuing to go up. The demand is continuing to go up as people stay in their homes. You guys know this, right? There was a period of time and probably still a period of time depending on where you live. If you're in California right now, I know everything shut down, but there are places where you can't go. So people are buying things on Amazon. It is ridiculous, okay? So obviously like I could give you so many more stats. Maybe we could just like throw up like a whole bunch of articles, right? That are all just about how Amazon is ridiculous. And this is what I want to talk about because so many people come in you know they come to nine university they come to this youtube channel they come to me and kale they come to any of the people that are on the team and they go well you know it's probably too late to do amazon right is, Am is amazon if even worth doing in 2020 right is it still even feasible should should you do this should you not do this okay i want that question to literally disappear Okay, because there's not a question of whether you should or shouldn't. I mean, we have literally CNBC, which is a, obviously a well rep, a rel, well reputable. That's not how you say that. Whatever. That's saying Amazon will be the most important company of 2020s. Okay, and so there's this saying of you know hitching your wagon, right? Why would you not want to hitch your wagon 
to the potential most important company of the 2020s. This is ridiculous. Now, obviously, Amazon is not the same that it was 10 years ago. We've already looked at, at their revenue, right? I'm sure if we, I don't even know what the numbers are. Maybe we can pull it up on the screen. But what was Amazon's stock price like in 2010? No idea, but let's go back and look at it and compare it to now where it's in the 2900s, right? Obviously, those things are changing business-wise, and things have obviously changed with the Amazon third-party, Amazon FBA selling model, right? Back in, 2000, in the early 2000s, like before 2010, you could literally just find a product, like this little fake succulent plant, and not do anything to it, and just put it up on Amazon, and it would sell. And back in those days, you could buy reviews, it was not against Amazon Terms of Service, and you would just make boatloads of money, okay? Now, obviously, that's not true anymore right? You have to find a good product. You have to find a good market. You have to be able to differentiate. You need to make sure your product is high quality. You need to make sure that, because when people go to Amazon, right? Here, here's what's crazy, okay? Is we've said this stat plenty of times before on this channel, but about 60% of everything that's sold on Amazon is sold by third-party sellers, right? So people like me, okay? What most people don't understand is that right there. They think that Amazon sells everything, and that's not true. And so, but when you're working with a $279.1 billion company, people have certain expectations, right? And so they want to know that whatever the product is, a little chair, I don't even know why this is here, uh, a little chair, right, is going to be high quality. So you need to make sure it's high quality. You need to have variations. You need to do all of these different things. You need to have incredible photos, a great listing, right? We could talk about all that stuff. And all of that stuff is talked about on other videos on the Nine University channel of how to do a listing, how to find a good product, how to look at variations. So if you aren't subscribed, click the subscribe button, click the bell notifications. We post seven days a week. It's ridiculous, but I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Okay. But here's what I want to talk about in 2020. Is it still worth doing, right? Is it still worth it? Right now, obviously just in 2020, because of the roller coaster that this world has been on. Okay. The entire world, right? Obviously Amazon has changed a lot of things. Okay. There have been a lot of things that Amazon has done around preventing counterfeit goods. Okay. And requiring a bunch of different things around that. There have been things that have basically come out in the past couple days about inventory space, about how Amazon has changed the formula, the IPI, the inventory performance index score. If you know what that is, you know what it is. If you don't know what it is, it's not a big deal for you to know about right this second. Okay. But basically, when, when we're using FBA, right, I buy a good, so I would buy, you know, a thousand of these little fake succulent plants and I would ship them into Amazon's warehouse, right? And then based on how many you sell, how fast you sell, Amazon gives you a score, okay? And what that score does is Amazon uses that score to determine how many units you can store in their warehouses, right? So can you store a thousand? Can you store 10,000? Can do you have unlimited room? Can you only store 200, right? So Amazon has been making changes around this inventory space because what they're seeing is there's so much demand of people wanting to buy on Amazon. And when I think in my head, right, I, I feel like I feel like this is a big thing. And I wasn't planning on talking about this, but I feel like this is a big thing, right? There are two biggest things that we think you should look at when you're looking to decide on a product to sell on Amazon, right? And it's competition and it is demand. Okay, those are the two biggest things. Now, there are obviously a lot of other things like return on investment, profit margin, all those kinds of things. But competition and demand. And I feel like what a lot of people get caught up on is the competition of, oh, well, there's so many people selling. There's, okay, let me just break this down for you. There's around 2 million active sellers on Amazon, give or take a couple, right? There are over 120 million products for sale on Amazon, okay? And there are million, tens of millions of buyers. I don't have exact numbers. Maybe we can throw up the exact numbers. I don't know them off the top of my head, so I'm not going to just make up a number. But guys, there's so many buyers, there's so many products that competition honestly is ruled irrelevant unless you're just being dumb and you're selling some super popular product that you shouldn't be selling, right? But what I look at, what Kale and I look at, what we look at in Nine University when we're looking at products is we want to make sure there's a very high demand so that whatever we put up for sale, we know it's going to actually sell so that we can make money, right? And so all Amazon is saying is the demand is just going up and up and up and it's going to continue to go up and what a lot of people don't realize check this out okay check this out amazon doesn't just have its retail website selling that have you guys ever heard of aws amazon web services okay pull up an article i don't know the exact number in my head i think it's like 30 40 50 percent somewhere in there of every single website on the entire planet is run through aws so amazon's got all these backup plans they're not going anywhere they're not going to fail anytime soon they're ridiculous ridiculous okay Basically, here's what I'm trying to say. In my opinion, is Amazon worth it in 2020? 110,000%.
We have people saying they're gonna be the most important company of the 2020s. And you have the opportunity through their third party selling system, through Amazon FBA, to hitch your wagon to them and see where you can go. And does it take work? Yes. Does it take time? Yes. Does it take effort? Yes. It is not as simple as just finding a product made somewhere across the world, putting in a box, putting on Amazon and making millions. That's not how it works. But if you are willing to put the time, the effort, the work in to hit your wagon up to potentially the most important company of the 2020s, there's no telling where you can go. That's why we're here. That's why Nine University exists. Guys, keep coming seven days a week. We're always here. We're always going to be here. This is ridiculous. Let's freaking go. Is Amazon worth it in 2020? I think so. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you liked that video, then I definitely know you're going to like this one too. Yep, and I made it just for you guys. So click, click right here.